Hey everyone, and welcome to another of my Avid tutorials. Uh, this one is on reframing and blowing up, punching in on shots as need be. I'll be honest, this isn't something that I like to do a ton of. I generally like to work with shots kind of as they were shot, but there are some people who will make projects and shoot high resolution, shoot a little wider than they need with the idea that they can punch in and get the closer shot that they want out of that higher resolution footage. So it's something good to be aware of. One note I do want to make is this is something that uh, if you're moving out of Avid to somewhere else, let's say you're finishing with a color grade in DaVinci Resolve, this information will not usually translate through to other programs. So it's something that if you're going to do for your finished edit, I would do it in the color grading stage. Now, if you need to do it during your creative edit to figure out what looks good and where you're going to cut stuff, obviously you can do that, but then you'll usually have to recreate that in the color grade if you're doing that in different software. If you're finishing straight out of Avid, then obviously whatever effects you do will come out when you output it. So first thing I'm going to do, I have some footage already in a sequence here, and I'm just going to work with that. And I'm going to pull up my effects palette. And so you can go Command-8 on a Mac, or you can go under your Tools menu, it's this right here, effect palette, or I actually have one over here docked and can use that. You can see there's all these different effects and you can type in here and search if you know what you're looking for, or you can go by categories of things, what you're looking for. And there's a few things that I could do a sort of simple punch in with. I could do a resize, I could do avid pan and zoom. I'm actually gonna use this one under 3D effect, which is 3D picture in picture. And the reason I like that is if it's something where I end up wanting to do a split screen, which is something where occasionally you will need to crop and blow up things and stuff like that, I need this one to be able to do that. If I do a pan and zoom or a resize, it basically resizes the frame on a black background. So even if I have another layer of video under it, I wouldn't see that. So I'm going to go to this and I'm just going to take it and drag it down onto the clip in question. And you can see when I do that, it just sort of highlights here. And since this by default is a picture in picture, the default is to actually shrink this down, but I can change that. And what I'm going to do now is pull up my effect editor. And this is in your tools menu right here, effect editor. I have actually have mine mapped to the keyboard so that I can get to it quickly. I use shift E just because that's convenient for me. Uh, you can map yours wherever you want if you'd like it, but I can use this to pull it up. And you'll see wherever my cursor is and whatever video track is highlighted, that's what it's going to pull up here. You can see I have control over all these different things and you can see the scale here. It's actually shrunk it down again with the idea that it's a picture in picture. We're going to see multiple things on top of each other. I could bring this up to hundred percent using my arrow keys left and right there. And now I'm back to my original shot. And again, if I just wanted to punch in, blow this up a little bit, I could slide these and let's say I wanted to go in that close. And so now I'm zoomed in, but I scrolled the character's face off the screen. So I'm going to go to my position and adjust that. And now I've got punched in on that shot from where I was. I can control all these different things about this uh, position horizontally, vertically. I could rotate this if for some reason I wanted to. There's a weird rotation there. Let's undo that. Could rotate along the z-axis, which is sort of more traditional rotation we would think of. I'll be honest, if I was going to be doing weird things like that, I would usually go into After Effects or something else to do that. I've mentioned on other tutorials, I'm not a huge fan of effects in Avid. I just don't think it's the greatest interface, as much as I love all the other editing aspects in here. Um, but you can do it in here is the point. And uh, I could also crop if I wanted to, you know, let's say do a split screen and I want to see something else on the bottom half of this screen. I could start cropping off the bottom until we get to that. And just to show you, if I put another clip under that here, you can see now that we are seeing parts of both clips there. All right, so there's the one I blew up on top and you can see that other clip on the bottom there. Let me undo those and go back into my effect editor here. And last thing I'll point out here is uh, these things are all keyframable if you needed to do so. So I'm gonna widen out my window here and you can see what I have here is my cursor and you can see the length of the clip from there to there. That's the length of it in the sequence. And I could add a keyframe and say, let's just add this to all the groups there. Why not? As always with keyframes, I need to have at least two points to do anything, right? I need to tell it where it's going from and where it's going to. And in this case, you know, let's say I wanted to just change the position so it was moving. So back here at this point, it's where we started there. And when we get to the end, I want it to shift downward or something like that. 
you can see that now that motion is keyframed in here. And I can keyframe all of these things. I could keyframe the scaling if I wanted it to look like a sort of slow punch in on something. In fact, let's take off this crop. We don't really need that. I was just demoing that. All right, so let's say maybe at the beginning of the clip here to the end of the clip, I want it to kind of do just a gradual push in. So start here and say I wanted it to start maybe like this, 188, and then let's go to this end point here. And now it's at 227. Okay, so you can see that changing as we go through here. Kind of hard to tell with the position also changing in there, so let's just right click on these and delete these position keyframes. And kind of just center this back up. And now you can really see sort of just that gradual push in that was happening, except it turns out there's a dolly move in here as well. <laughs> um, but you can see the scale here changing. One other thing I'll note on the scaling is I have this fixed aspect box checked. Normally, if you're doing like a punch in, you want that because you want your X and Y to scale in the same direction so things don't get stretched. But I can turn that off if I want. So say I just want to stretch things vertically out like that or shrink things vertically or however I want to do it. So you do have those full controls. So you can do that. And that's basically how you punch in on a shot. Let's say that this particular punch in effect I liked and I wanted to reuse in another shot. If I have this effect editor open, a quick thing I can do is just grab this effect and I'm grabbing up here where it says the name of the effect, whatever it might be. I'm just gonna drag it down to another clip and that'll apply that same effect to that clip with the same settings, same keyframing and everything that was in there gets carried over. Okay, hope that was useful for you if you were looking for some information on how to do a quick reframe or crop or punch in on Avid. As always, like, subscribe, tell a friend, all that stuff and see you next time.